All right, the dust has settled on the big GM announcement, uh, joining the Tesla supercharging network in 2024 with adapters, and as well as 2025, all new GM cars are gonna come equipped with the Tesla port built into their cars, and will have access to 12,000 plus uh, superchargers. So on this uh, video, we're gonna show you uh, or share my thoughts on all this. Plus, we're gonna do some Tesla spotting. There's two right there on the right-hand side. Uh, figured we'd uh, do two videos in one, make it a little fun. There's a third one there. So we're up to three and I barely left my neighborhood. Ford did the big announcement uh, early June, uh, joining the Tesla supercharging network. And that was earth shattering and mind blowing. And then the week, a little week later, week and a half later, GM decides to do the same thing and join on board with Tesla, admitting defeat in a so weird sort of way uh, by saying, you know what? The Tesla connector and the Tesla supercharging network are second to none. There's no way we can compete with that. Let's just join them. Let's see what Elon has to say about it. And the dominoes are already falling. So Ford was the first major one. Uh, GM coming on board is now the second major player in the automotive industry. It's just a matter of time now. If if other EV makers want to sell their cars, they're going to have to join the Tesla supercharging network. There's a Tesla behind me. I can't show you that, though. So that what is that for? I, I'm not going to be able to keep track. Uh, we're in uh, Los Angeles County, northern Los Angeles County. We're heading down to the San Fernando Valley, uh, about a 20 minute drive. I don't know if I'm going to bore you with it. 20 minutes. I have been known to do that though. So uh, anyway, two videos in one, like I said, my thoughts on the whole Ford GM thing, as well as Tesla spotting. There's one right there. I think that's five. Um, so the dominoes are already falling. We're already seeing what that's going to be. Let's keep in mind though, everybody who's freaking out on the Tesla side, oh my God, the superchargers are going to be crowded and it's going to be awful. And oh my gosh, the world is ending. Let's keep in mind, the number one selling car is the Tesla Model Y. Not the number one selling electric car, the number one selling car. So there's already a lot of competition amongst just Teslas going into the supercharger network. My thoughts on that are we still have six months left in 2023. It's June-ish uh, when I record this. So. We got about six months to go. They also didn't say when in 2024 that they're gonna begin opening things up to Ford and Chevy with adapters for the current fleet that's out there that doesn't have the um, the Tesla adapter on there. So, you know, that could be December of 24, who knows? You know, Elon time might not even be 24. Um, that is the car that was behind us. So that one already counts, the, uh, the Model 3 there, the black one. So, there's already a lot of competition out there with just Teslas. Uh, they are still building out the Tesla supercharger network. And I have a feeling that Tesla is going to be now the de facto gas station for electric cars and more makers are going to come on board. I have a feeling Toyota is going to come kicking and screaming, probably one of the last. Don't hold me to that if they announce next week. <laughs> um, but uh, you've got the two bigs. You know, it's just a matter of time before the rest fall in line and just say, okay, there's a Tesla there. I think that's six, seven, uh, probably seven. I don't know, you, you keep track. Uh, I'm just gonna point them out. It's gonna be a lot, I have a feeling, uh, as we play our Tesla spotting game. So I don't know what your thoughts are on this, but I think Tesla does computer models and they're showing how many cars are on the road, how many Teslas are on the road, how often superchargers are being used. Let's be honest, for the most part, they should only be used during long journeys, road trips. I get it in urban areas, those that live in apartments uh, may not have home charging, they're being used for that, so that's fair, that's fine. But I think they know that too. And they're gonna know how many electric cars are on the road coming from Ford, and there's a Tesla there. Um, they're going to know. They're going to have projections. They're going to know how many are being built. They're going to, I'm sure that's part of the deal with uh, Elon and I say Elon, it's Tesla with Tesla and Ford and GM. They're going to have projections on how many are being sold, how many are on the road. There's a Tesla over there making a left. 
Um, Tesla over to the right, just saw a white one. I hope you're keeping track because I'm not. <laughs> I'm just, it's gotta be a lot. Lots of Teslas, there's one there. Uh, lots of Teslas on the road already, lots of competition, especially in California. Those in the middle of the country and you're, you're visiting your local supercharging, I don't know what the fuss is all about. There's like nobody here most of the time. And that's true because um, people get in, they get out. By the way, Tesla supercharging tip. If you're new to Tesla or if you're a new GM and Ford owner and you're about to use these things, uh, you don't charge full. This is not a gasoline car. You don't go to the gas station and fill her up. You basically live, at least for me, I live in, on a road trip, I live in the 5% to 70% portion of the battery. And the reason that is, is that's the fastest charging portion of the battery. Uh, once you get past 70%, it's glacially slow. I mean, really, why would you want to, why would you want to live like that? Okay, so the US government has been asking Tesla to open up their supercharger network to other manufacturers. I'm sure there was an incentive uh, that the government was gonna give, the US government that is, uh, was gonna give Tesla if they did in fact open up their supercharger network. Uh, five, six months ago, they did so a little bit. There's a Tesla on our left. Uh, did so with the Magic Dock, mainly in the Northeast portion of the US. There's a couple in California as well, and they haven't really done much since. But the point is, okay, so now the U.S. government has asked Tesla to open this up. Now GM and Ford are coming on board and saying, hey, we're going to start using it. Is this going to be a monopoly problem now? Because now Tesla, like I mentioned, is going to be the de facto gas station for most electric cars. And when you put in GM and Ford, yeah, now it's most electric cars. Um, yeah, there's other manufacturers. Um, so hopefully that doesn't become a problem. I mean, Tesla will be like, okay, well you asked us to, and now you're complaining about it. Tesla parked over there. Um, so yeah, it's an interesting times we're living in. So I began driving uh, electric cars in 2014. Uh, I, there's a whole video on my electric vehicle uh, resume. And Back then we had four, maybe five choices that we went shopping for electric cars. And at the time, Tesla Model S was just way, way out of price range. It was in the high hundreds or low hundreds, I, sh I should say. And it just wasn't, you know, something we could do. So we settled on the RAV4 EV, which was Tesla powered, Tesla motor, Tesla battery. Um, at the time there was the Leaf. I think the Volt was out, which wasn't full EV. Um, now come full circle, we are seeing it's just amazing to see the progression of electric cars coming to this point where, you know, people were saying Tesla's doomed. There, there's no way they're gonna make it. New cars are hard. And just watching the progression of Tesla slowly becoming a powerhouse and not only a powerhouse, now the other manufacturers are coming to them and begging them, hey, could we please use your network because you're better and you thought of this ahead of time and it's built out and it's massive and people know how to road trip with them and it's it's amazing to cut see uh, full circle. Now, here's a couple other questions. Uh, Electrify America in a roundabout way is associated with Volkswagen and you know, the ID4 compelling car for sure. Um, the Volkswagen bus is coming out. I forget what they call it. The buzz, that's right, the Volkswagen buzz very, very cool, compelling car coming out. Are they gonna switch their nozzles to Tesla? Are they gonna join the Tesla bandwagon and shut down Electrify America? Because the last six, eight months, the news has not been good for Electrify America. They're hard to use. They're down most of the time. They're broken. They're not reporting uh, as up properly. Lots of headaches in the EV world. Electric cars just not having uh, a good time, as easy as a time as you roll up on a supercharger. For a Tesla, if you're new to this whole thing, a Tesla rolls up on a supercharger, you plug in, walk away, it's charging. In seconds, it's not even, you're not waiting for any kind of handshake or payment or anything. The payment is built into the car, the credit card is tied to the car. Obviously, uh, we've got two Teslas coming up here on our left. There's a black Model 3 and another black Model 3 coming up on our left, so uh, add that to the, the count, the tally. I'm not even looking on the other side. There's one on the left side as well. Uh, so 
Is this the nail in the coffin? Two nails in separate coffins. Is this the nail in the coffin for CCS? And is this the nail in the coffin for gasoline cars? Is this the, the thing that pushes people out and say, all right, you know what? You can road trip these cars. The Tesla supercharger network is unbelievable from what we hear. This is a person on the fence trying to buy a, an electric car. And it's time, you know, the writing's on the wall. Gasoline cars, I think, I have been thinking this for years. It's now interesting that it's finally come full circle and, and, and happening right before my eyes. But uh, the Ford GM thing, I think, is the nail in the coffin for CCS because the Tesla nozzle and the Tesla charging experience is just second to none. Uh, CCS is kind of comical to look at at this point. And then because Tesla continues to build these out, it's going to be like the gas station of the future, the fueling, the whatever it is. Here comes a uh, Polestar coming in hot. Almost ran into me. <laughs> that doesn't count as part of our count, though. But boy, I love those. Those just have a they have a stance. They have an aggressive look to them. I really like the Polestar. Very cool car. Um, it's exciting times to be uh, driving electric, isn't it? All right, so those are my thoughts. We saw a bunch of Teslas. We saw a Polestar almost rear end me. I mean, it was coming in hot. <laughs> uh, and those are my thoughts on my early thoughts. I'm sure I'll have more thoughts as time goes on about the GM Ford Tesla thing. What will next week bring? Will we see Toyota? You know, will we see Subaru? Will we see Volkswagen? Will we see, it's just gonna be an amazing thing to watch at this point when you've got two big, huge, massive automakers in GM and Ford coming to Tesla and uh, asking for, for their use of the supercharger network. I can't wait to see the details of these uh, deals too, by the way. That's gonna be interesting to watch too. All right, thanks once again for joining us on Tesla Tips and Trips. Um, I would totally, totally appreciate it if you would go ahead and not only like this video, but hit the subscribe button. It takes you a few seconds out of your day, but it means the world to our channel and means that we can continue doing videos like this and other videos, accessory videos and review videos and all that kind of stuff. So uh, please go ahead and uh, hit that like, subscribe, and if you really want to know when we've got new stuff coming out, which is a lot more these days, hit the bell. All right, we'll catch you on the next video. Thanks so much.